Starlight, star bright, we create a feast tonight. I love you colorful, keep us full of life. Keep us shining, shining bright, starlight. Hi, my name is Jill and welcome to Starlight Eats. Today we're making carrot cake. It is made with organic carrots, which I just took my walk earlier. And I used my two pounds of carrots to work out on the way home from Publix. <laughs> hey, you gotta build in everything, you know, food into everything, healthy food. So that's what we're making today and it's going to be delicious. I have my grandma's bowl, my grandma Mickey, my mom's mom. She left us these wonderful tools that I'm sure she made millions of dishes in and probably thousands of loaves of bread. So my mom did teach me well loaves of bread. So we're gonna focus on our carrot cake and the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to do a gluten free. So I have gotten uh, some buckwheat and I did the buckwheat groats. So it's not even buckwheat flour. You can buy buckwheat flour, good luck finding it. I just can't find it. And I live in Florida, so we don't have a health food store like California around every corner. So, but buckwheat groats, and then I just threw it in my blender, maybe, you know, 10, 15 seconds, and it made into flour. So we're doing a half of the buckwheat groats and half a cup of the gluten-free flour, which is the garbanzo bean flour. Now these are both very, very nice and they will make a little bit heavier cake, but they won't be any less moist because the carrots give it a moistness. So it's a very small recipe that is just one cup of flour. Um, and again, you can use, you know, whatever you really like in there, but if you're doing a gluten-free, just keep it, you know, the garbanzo bean flour seems to work very well in, as a substitute. So then it takes, um, we're doing the organic brown sugar. It did call for just regular sugar, but we're doing the organic brown. And my cup will not fit in there. So, and again, the brown sugar actually makes it more moist, I think, than the white sugar. And white sugar just, you know, just try to really cut that out of your life. Um, so these are the dry ingredients. We're stirring that up. We're going to be mixing, mixing in grandma's bowl. And then we're doing um, a teaspoon of cinnamon, a teaspoon of baking powder, and baking soda. teaspoon of salt. This is a really moist recipe. I actually had um, a carrot cake the other day with my friend um, and it wasn't worth the calories. It was okay. This recipe, I don't really know what makes it different. I guess it's Granny's bowl, but it is, it's really, really good and moist and fresh. And I think it does have to do with the flowers being really fresh as well. I mean, think about how long that flower's been in you literally have to check white flour for bugs. You have to be very careful with plain old white flour from the market nowadays. It's really better to just grind your own. You can use oatmeal too, you know. Oatmeal is very much better on a lot of people's systems too. So we're just, we're just stirring that together and getting out some of those little lumps of brown sugar. And then we're going to in a separate little bowl, we're going to put our one, I'm actually going to do two teaspoons of vanilla. I like a little extra vanilla. And I'm using sunflower oil from Trader Joe's. Of course, I love Trader Joe's. Um, so sunflower oil is actually very pure and good for you. You can look it up and see the benefits. It does take three-fourths of a cup, so that's quite a large amount. You want to make sure that it's a very good, healthy oil. I did make coconut oil cookies the other day, and they were fantastic. They were very chewy. Excellent, excellent. So it's okay to use a substitute. You can look it up online now and, and find hundreds of recipes just for with coconut oil. 
Um, so then we're doing the eggs. And we're going to do, probably should follow the recipe at some point, right? Two eggs. I'm not quite as good as Audrey Hepburn in the movie where she goes to France and learns how to cook, but um, hey, I did not claim to be a professional. Okay, so there's the wet ingredients, and we're just going to whip those up a little. Just whip it over your source because obviously you're going to spill some. You can go ahead and dump that into your dry ingredients. And now we're going to do our carrots. I actually <clears throat> I already prepared one pound of carrots. <laughs> the carrots are running into the camera. The carrots are wild this morning. We're going to rinse those really well. And these, again, are organic carrots. I would prefer, and this is something you've got to look up. You've got to be very cautious about. Certain things really do make a difference in organic because of how they collect the uh, toxins from the pesticides. So be very careful again what you're eating, like strawberries, you should never eat regular strawberries. They should be organic just to protect your family and everything for their health. So these, the organic carrots, I have a carrot soup recipe and I have to say that if I don't use the organic carrots, it is not good. It just, they have so much more flavor. So really important to use organic carrots. This is one pound. I'm just gonna snap them into my little and we have cat fight in the background, I see. Okay. Kitty, kitty, kitty. Minxie cat, Zoe. This is just like when I was raising the kids. Okay, so we are just popping in these into our little food processor. We're going to find out the strength of this thing right now. See how strong you are, dude. <laughs> okay. So I'm just going to spin this and I'm going to protect your ears so I'll be right back. So I actually put the carrots which were about six to seven carrots. Uh, it was a one pound bag in my little grinder which worked very well. I didn't shake the house down or anything, no earthquakes. Now it does take one and a half cups. And I believe that's probably a little more than we even need here, which is fine. There's always carrot soup. All right, so we're just tossing in, there's one. And then I'm gonna go over a little bit, over a little half. There's a couple of big, little bit larger chunks in there. I am gonna pull those. I don't want giant chunks, although it probably wouldn't hurt. I prefer not to have stir fry. Okay, so I'm gonna put almost two cups, really. So you know, a little extra isn't gonna hurt anything. And then we're just stirring that in. I'm finding a couple of big chunks there. So it's very nice. <laughs> And we're just stirring. This actually is kind of a small recipe, but it's mighty. It's mighty. Everyone's going to love you. Mighty. Okay. Now I am going to add just a few pecans. And again, I'm just throwing in, but it does take a half a cup chopped pecans. And I'm just really going to squeeze them in my hands a bit. You can use chopped, that's nice. I think I'll probably put just a little bit more as well. Now, my recipe normally does not call for this, but this is so beautiful, I wanted to use it. Fresh sliced coconut. Coconut is also, um, you know, very moisturizing. <laughs> Wait, that's an aesthetic term. But very hy oh, hydrating, right, that too. Okay, so I'm just doing a handful. It's gonna make your cake more moist. How about that? Okay, you can tell that I'm just really mixing up my careers here. Okay, so, oh, look at that, it's gorgeous. 
it's just so easy because I didn't even have to get out my blender and you can see that it's very very moist already okay so one thing I like to teach people to do when they're cooking is before you finish the recipe go back to your recipe and read off each ingredient making sure that you have put it in there so pecans carrots vanilla oil eggs cinnamon salt soda powder sugar and flour okay so it's all good so we're getting rid of my giant cookbook right now and we are we're gonna do the frosting next I think I'm wearing most of the cinnamon so now we're going to take I mean next after we put the cake in the oven so I'm an Aquarian I get ahead of myself all right so I am using actually the spray coconut oil from Trader Joe's and I'm doing the little bunt pan I don't like those edges to get too much oil because it just burns on there and we are just going to plop this right in to the bunt pan. Bunt pans are just so pretty. This is just a standard bunt pan. And that's that. Wow, that looks lovely and very, very moist. So we're gonna pop it in the oven and I'm gonna show you how to make the frosting. So our oven is heated up to 325 degrees. We're putting our bunt carrot cake in. We're gonna set the timer for 350. I mean, for, for 350 for um, 50 minutes, actually 40 minutes. And we're gonna check at 40 minutes because it says 50, but it's a little bit smaller recipe. So never over bake a cake, never under bake it too much either, but it's really crucial. Thanksy, what are you doing? Okay, so now our frosting. Okay, I am actually using a little bit of the coconut be beverage from Trader Joe's. This has um, vitamin A, D, and B12 and calcium. And if you check it out, it's fairly good ingredients. Um, I think it's healthy enough to go with putting in a little bit in recipes and in your smoothies and stuff, as opposed to um, cow's milk. Sad, I love my cows, but um, I love grandpa's cows. Okay, but you know, just watching your diet, you wanna switch it up sometime, and this is a nice alternative. So we're taking, we're cutting off, we just cut off uh, three ounces of cream cheese. And again, you know, in life, if you do the pure thing, it's really, really not that bad. So we are adding that in. And we are going to soften that just a little bit in the microwave i don't usually like to do that but when you're in a hurry it's okay um you can soften it by leaving it out for you know an hour before if you want um, and we're going to be doing um more vanilla i use actually i wanted to talk to you about this uh, land of lakes makes this butter with olive oil this is a really pure simple butter and it's soft because it has the olive oil in it um, if you read the ingredients, it's very simple. Um, something that our natural doctor always taught us to do was to, oh, it's exploding. Okay, lower, lower, lower. All right. Obviously, don't let that go very long. It's going crazy in there. Okay. We're having all kinds of storms today, aren't we? So there's your cream cheese, and it is already softened, and we're just going to blend it. So it's blend, that was like what, 30 seconds maybe? I guess it's a good idea to cover it just in case it goes crazy like that. But in the Mikey, it does melt really quickly and it makes it nice and smooth. But our, but our natural doctor used to say, shop the outer edges of your grocery. And that makes a lot of sense because that's where all the natural things and fresh things are. So try to do that. Think, think wisely when you're making your food choices today. This is so, we're just gonna throw in a couple of tablespoons 
of butter. You can do regular old butter as well, but of course you have to melt that and soften that too. Kind of like this olive oil one for if you're having a little toast or whatever too, or on your pancakes. So we're blending that nicely. So that gets blended really well first. Then we're just putting a splash, which probably is going to end up being about a teaspoon to a teaspoon and a half of vanilla. And then, um, then we're going to put a splash as well of coconut milk. We're going to, let's keep that handy just in case we need to put a little more. Kind of whipping that together is nice so that it gets blended and you have a nice creamy start. That's beautiful. We used to make snow ice cream out of snow and not yellow snow, come on. And um, we were on a farm, but we weren't that dumb. So, <laughs> so I guess we put like a little bit of milk and a little bit of vanilla, not much milk. That was like the best ice cream ever. Weird, the things we did when we were kids. Okay, so I'm just tapping in some, I probably put a cup right now of the uh, powdered sugar. I don't think you should go crazy with it because you want it a certain consistency. Now see, it's actually getting to be a really nice consistency already. See, nice and smooth. But if you get it too thick, see it's not gonna really run on. I kind of like a drizzle. So it depends on what you're looking for. If you want it to be a nice firm type frosting, actually maybe we'll just leave it like this because this seems pretty good. But you can add a little bit more coconut milk and make it a little runny and drizzly and like that. I think this looks beautiful. So we're just gonna go with that and wait for our cake to bake. Here's our beautiful carrot cake, all baked and done. It's very small, you see, it's not super big, but um, it is extremely tender. I did end up baking it at 325 for 30 minutes. Don't do a minute longer, maybe even a couple minutes less. Just keep watching it, touch it, that it springs back a little bit. We're gonna put it on this beautiful plate. My friend gave me these many years ago, and she's an artist. And actually, she draws and paints a lot like that, so it's kind of cool. So I'm just placing, I've, I've already loosened the edges by taking a knife, gently going around the edges. It has been sitting out of the oven for 10 minutes, so it's starting to cool down. And now I'm going to pray to God that it comes out. Um, now, remember, we put lots of coconut oil. Voila! That's what a really good pan helps with, too. You want to make sure your pan works. Oh, my goodness. Look how pretty it is. And it's very tender. I can tell. It smells wonderful. So now, even though it's fresh and hot, I really do want to go ahead and just put on the icing, the frosting, because it's nice and warm. And I think I'm just going to do this. In a, with a little bit of a knife type thing here. We did whisk it again to make sure it's all whipped up good. And then I'm just going to drizzle it. It's a little thick, but we're going to get it on there and then kind of work it around like that. Just pushing it around on the Boy, I'm no Martha Stewart, am I? But hey, I guess if it tastes amazing, isn't that what matters? Ooh, it could be pretty too, you know, but okay. <laughs> so we're just drizzling on our beautiful cream cheese icing. And that is pretty much it. That is pretty much pretty. And your neighbors and friends will love you for this. So you see the consistency if we made it like a little bit less, you know, put a little bit less of the coconut 
milk in it, it would be a little more firm, but I kind of like it nice and runny like this and putting it on hot goes right down into the surface of the cake as well and there again I'm mixing skincare with food <laughs> okay oh it's beautiful there it is and bon appetit enjoy thanks for joining star lady so I thought I should cut a piece and show you how nice it is it turned out so moist and beautiful there it is. Enjoy.